Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Weekly Coder. I'm Chris, and uh, this week we're going to continue with our Minesweeper. We are on part eight now. Last week we uh, added the, um, we actually finished up the checking of the adjacent tiles to make sure that uh, all those tiles get cleared when we hit a blank, for instance. Uh, so, you know, when we click, it clears out all this area for us if there is an adjacent tile, and then it actually stops at the um, clue tiles so that it doesn't reveal anymore. So for instance, we know now if we check because we've got a clue here, right, one. We also have a clue here, which is one. Um, so either one of these clues, this one, this one, or this one, will tell us that this is actually a mine, right? Uh, same thing for we've got uh, this one now. We can say, well, this is a mine here, so we check this is not a mine. Now we know that there are three mines around. So and that's, I mean, I don't need to explain to anybody how to play Minesweeper, hopefully. If you're here wanting to make this game, then you know the process. But what we need to do now is, uh, let's say that we get to a point where we're like, okay, well, uh, this is a mine for sure, right? Um, but I don't want to click it, obviously, because I'll lose the game, but I want to remember that there's a mine there. So uh, in order to do that, uh, the way that... I remember doing it when I was playing this game way back, like before I got into using, you know, Macs. I actually was on Windows and I played Minesweeper a lot. So the way that we did it then is uh, there was a, a right click option. If you right clicked a tile, it would set a flag on it. Uh, right clicking it again would clear that flag. So what we have to do here is we have to implement a right click. So the best way to do that is. Um, we have the tiles that get created, and each tile that gets created has this tile script on it, all right, as part of the um, component. So this is actually really, really simple to do. And as soon as Visual Studio decides to launch the file that I had requested it to open, there we go. Any minute now? All right. So we've got our tile here, and we have a struct that, uh, or an enumeration that basically says, hey, uh, what kind of tile am I? So the other thing we need to do now is we need to add another uh, enumeration, and we will call this one, no, we do not want to do updates right now. We'll call this one uh, tile state, and the two states that we'll give it are normal and flagged. Okay, so this way we can now create a. Let's go down here. Public tile state. Tile state. Oops tile state dot normal because in the beginning we want the tiles to just be as normal right we're not flagging them right from the get-go all right so since our tile class is actually inheriting from mono behavior we have a uh, method available to us that is literally called every frame and that is called on mouse over okay so anytime the mouse hovers over the game object that our script is attached to, uh, we get a, uh, we can do something with that information. Because what we do, let's see here, just do this, on mouse over, right? And then what we'll do is while we're in this mouse over state, we're gonna check for something. We're gonna say if input dot get mouse button up, okay. So we're checking to see if the mouse button up event was triggered, and we're gonna pass in the number one. And what the number one means is that we're checking the second button, actually. So the first button then being obviously zero. So zero for left click and one for right click. So then what we do is we say, hey, um, if our current tile state 
is equal to tile state dot normal, then we want to set our tile state to tile state dot flagged. So we'll say tile state equals tile state dot flagged. Um, otherwise, sorry, let's do it this way. Else, we say tile state equals tile state dot normal. So basically, we're just swapping back and forth between the two. So the other thing that we need to do is we need to create another public sprite variable, which will hold the sprite for the flag. Okay, so this will be the flag sprite. Right. Default sprite is okay. So then the covered sprite. All right. So <clears throat> we're going to use that right click to swap between the flagged and not flagged right sprite. So the not flagged sprite then being the covered sprite. So what we'll do is here when we set the tile state to being flagged, we're also going to get component sprite renderer dot sprite equals uh, what do we call it? Flag sprite. And then here we say get component sprite renderer sprite equals uh, covered sprite. And then I guess we could put a check in here that only allows us to do this if the sprite is covered. Because if it's not covered, we can't flag it anyways. So let's just say that we only care about even checking if we're right clicking if it's uncovered. So if not is covered, all right, sorry, if is covered. So we wanna say if is covered. So meaning that the uh, covered property is true, then we're gonna cut and paste that into here. All right, so let's just go over this really quick before we jump into the Unity and um, assign our sprite. So what happens first is we created this enumeration called tile state. We then set two different states, normal and flagged. And at that point, we... Should we leave? Yeah, that's fine, we can do that. Um, so in case you're wondering what I'm thinking here is I'm, I'm toying with the idea of whether or not we should create a Boolean to say whether or not the tile is flagged, but we don't have to do that because we created this tile state, which we've been actually is, is a public right here. So we can check this tile state at any time to see if it's normal or flagged. And the reason that I'm saying this is because when the tiles are flagged, they're protected in a way, right? When they're flagged, you can't click on them to reveal any mines or ac that, that keeps you from accidentally clicking on tiles. So we want to disable the clicking on tiles if a tile is flagged. Okay, so then the only other thing that we added here is uh, on mouse over. Okay, so that's an event that's called every frame. Then we're going to say if during this frame, if it is covered, right, then we say, okay, well, uh, is the right mouse button being clicked? And if it is, we check to see what state our tile is in. And based on what state the tile is in, it's going to reverse that state to the other state.
So that should work. So we'll do, we'll save that. And then we'll go to Unity. And before we can do anything else, we actually have to go to the, prefabs and these are all the tiles so what we'll have to do is highlight them all and then we'll set the uh, the flag sprite which we should have in here which is right here to the cover block flag. That should do it. All right, so now if we press play, if we right click on any one of the blocks, it's not working. Which is weird. So is covered, is true. Cover block flag, tile state, the tile state isn't changing when I'm right clicking. Huh. It's interesting, why does that not work? Alright, let's jump back into here. Let's see if we're getting these events. Um, Debug.log. Mouse over. Um, let's do. So this should tell us if we're hovering over any of these. Does this be Yeah, this is just because I'm left clicking. And we're not getting on mouse over is not being called. Okay, so I think I may know the issue. Um, just actually thought about this for a second. And what we need to do is we need to put colliders on our objects. So I'm going to go to the prefabs and I'm going to add a component and it's just going to be a box collider 2D. So now each of our prefabs will have a uh, 2D box collider. So then, because that's what these uh, on mouse enter functions or methods are actually being called on is uh, the colliders are actually detecting the on enters and exits and things like that and overs so that, uh, oh, I did that in play just now, didn't I? Nope, oh, that's good. All right, so let's try that. All right, so that's working. See if we look at the console, it's telling us, oops. What we're hovering over. See how they're changing? All right, so that's actually kind of cool. Um, Cause it tells you what kind of tile you're over. All right, so, oh, we didn't even test our right click. Oh, let's do that. 
All right. So right click's working. So now we need to make it so that if there's a flag, you don't want the uh, the click to produce anything. So we don't want to uncover the tile if it's flagged. So I'm gonna get rid of this uh, debug log because we don't need that. And then I'm gonna go to game. And right here in our check input, when we're doing this, what we need is before before we do any of this, actually, let's see, when we get the tile, that's when we can check if tile dot uh, tile state equals tile dot tile state dot normal then we want to do this and also what is that Also, we only care if the tile is already uh, is not uncovered yet. So we should also check if tile dot um, is covered. So we only want to uncover it if it's actually covered, right? So now the first thing we're doing, obviously, is we're getting the mouse position of wherever you clicked. And then we get our X and Y for that. And then we get our tile. And this should allow us to only uncover tiles that are not covered and flagged. So let's save that and go to Unity. All right, so I'm gonna set a flag here and I'm gonna try to click it. See, nothing happens. If I try to click the flag next to or next to that, let's go this, this route. Wow, that was such a lucky guess. So that is actually a, uh, a mine there that <laughs> I correctly identified just by sheer luck. Um, so then obviously this one is a mine. So this one is not, this one's not. Uh, these two are not, um, this one is, so this one is not, um, this one is not, this one is, so this one isn't, it means this one, this one, this one, this one, and this is not, which means this is, and this is, ugh, this is not. Okay, so... I think uh, we could, nope, I think the next tutorial, that's when we'll talk about doing the, uh, the game over and the resetting of the game, right? So the next thing will be to, when we click on a mine accidentally, it'll click, it'll change to red, indicating that that's the, the mine that killed us. And then it'll also reveal any of the other mines that were there as well as reveal which ones weren't mines that we incorrectly thought that they were, right? Like, so let's say that we had flagged number two as being a mine. Once we uncover the mine, it'll then show us, hey, you put a flag here, but this one is actually a mine, or not a mine. So it'll, it'll have like a little X through it. And we have that image that is uh, over, let's see. If we look in graphics, that's this image here, the, the not a mine image. This is the image that we're gonna set for when um, we clicked on the mine, and then this one's gonna be for when the flag turned out to be not a mine. And then that will take care of all the images. And I think after that, maybe, maybe we'll do one more video on UI. I'm not 100% sure I wanna get into the UI. Uh, you know, the, um, where it shows you score, and like, I don't know, I mean, it's kind of, uh, yeah, maybe we'll do it, because this next episode will be episode 9, and then maybe we'll have it end our 
Minesweeper tutorial series with a nice round number of 10. So I think in the beginning I said that this was going to be like a 10 part tutorial and I actually was, you know, right about that then in that case. Anyways, uh, so yeah, there you have it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And I'd like to thank all of my Patreons. Not my Patreons, Patreons the page. I'd like to say thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon who support me over there. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thanks for all the support. Uh, if you like the video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell for notifications. And I'll see you guys next week.